say what happened. So as uh, as most of our residents know, we got struck with a pretty uh, yeah, strong earthquake at about uh, uh, 5.30 this morning. Uh, uh, woke a lot of people up. Uh, it was felt very widely all throughout the Midwest. Um, we got in here and started examining the records from our seismograph. Very shortly thereafter, there was a series of very small aftershocks. And then just uh, an hour or so ago, we had a, a magnitude four and a half aftershock. So this is a pretty active sequence that started. Uh, and uh, at least a handful of these, I think, are, are, uh, have been widely felt around the area. Talk about how rare, uh, or is this the most powerful earthquake Bloomington has experienced in the last couple of years? Or talk a little bit about uh, the kind of this brief is, history. This, in, the, in the global scheme of things, this would be considered a moderate earthquake. Earthquakes this size happen once every few days somewhere around the world. Uh, and uh, most of them are in remote areas. We don't hear about them. When they're in a populated area, of course, they make some news. This one is probably the largest earthquake we've had in the last 40 years or so. There was a magnitude 5.5 earthquake in 1968 in southern Illinois. Since then, we've had a series of more moderate-sized earthquakes, close to the size of this one, a magnitude 5 in 1987, very close to the area of this one. Uh, probably a lot of people remember 2002 near Evansville, there was a magnitude 5 earthquake. Both of those were widely felt, like this one, all throughout the Midwest perhaps some minor damage in the epicentral area, but nothing too major. Uh, a lot of people say Indiana, we're in the Wabash Valley, uh, kind of on the far outskirts of that new Madrid fault or whatnot. Right. Can you talk about our geographic position yeah. and, and the impact that that has on, on we're us? We're essentially on the northern periphery of a very active seismic zone, the New Madrid uh, seismic zone is the site of three very large magnitude 7 plus earthquakes in the last century, 1811, 1812. Uh, very dense concentration of activity up and down the Mississippi River Valley, basically from southernmost Illinois to uh, northeastern Arkansas. The area we're in, and we're recording an aftershock right now, it looks like. Uh, the area we're in is part of the Wabash Valley seismic zone, the northern periphery of New Madrid. Um, this area is lower seismic activity, but it records earthquakes uh, about this size once every 10 or 20 years. So this is pretty much in character. Uh, what can people expect going forward? I know you were talking earlier about uh, kind of the aftershock period lasts for a couple days, depending on the magnitude of the, the initial quake. Yeah, so it, it's somewhat variable, but what we're seeing from this one is this is a pretty, uh, pretty active aftershock sequence. Uh, typically for an earthquake this size, sequence might last a week or 10 days. Um, typically, the intensity dies down over a, over the course of a few days. Starting, you know, with the, some of the larger aftershocks are usually recorded within the first uh, 24, 48 hours, uh, and then gradually dying down. But it's highly variable, and sometimes there's very little activity, and then a little more. It just depends on the, the detailed mechanics of the Earth's crust where the earthquake occurred. But long story short, people shouldn't be surprised if you know they feel a little rumbling just in the next couple days. Right. This is pretty much expected. Obviously, people are a little unsettled when they've uh, had an experience like this, and uh, it's not a sign necessarily that this is the start of a new period of activity. This is the, the changes in the Earth's crust that are that are uh, initiated by a, a single main shock, and then it's a, a gradual decay of seismic activity.